Thank you. Thank you to Pio for organizing this event. Thank you to the Ministry for picking up the tab. And to all of you for coming. I'm very happy and honored to be asked to speak. The Mediterranean issue now is the largest protection crisis Europe has faced in 20 years. Unfortunately, it took very many dead bodies floating in the Mediterranean for politicians to wake up to reality that they had been told was happening for a long time by people such as the Norwegian Shipowners Association. What we have seen in Europe is a center stage of politics where the politicians have abdicated from their responsibility to act facing such an issue. Maybe the fear for the, the, all those critical of migration, refugees, uh, the fear for those political movements drove everybody else away from this center stage where they have to re-enter. We're seeing a bit of it now, but what we have seen so far is extremely little in compared to the issue we are facing. So I hope both Norwegian politicians and European politicians will take the issue much more seriously and with a completely different sense of ambition than what we've seen so far. The points that you made from IOM are so relevant, very, very good, and they, but they also contain that, that lack of ambition uh, that we expect to see from somebody governing 500 million people with a lot of economic resources. And the, uh, the issue we're facing is not all that big. We are talking about less people. Even if there was a million, it is less people than Turkey have received last year. It is not all that many. It is less people than any other region in the world is facing uh, refugee-wise at the moment. So Europe is in quite a luxurious position in that they have a manageable task, unless we define it as unmanageable, unless as we define it as a threat that we struggle to overcome. So that said, we actually have an historical lesson learned, and that's what I would like to talk about. We have faced similar crises before. One of them was in Southeast Asia, Vietnam. Uh, after the Vietnam War, uh, we had enormous displacement, refugees leaving by the tens of thousands. Uh, gradually, uh, the conflict ended, but migration and a mixed, mixed flow uh, combined with those that fled from persecution. And the international community sat down and adopted a comprehensive plan of action. This is what we should do in Europe again. We have a model. The comprehensive plan of action, just as we have now, it had four major geographical areas. The country of origin, where did people leave? Here we're talking many countries, but still the same concept. We have the countries of transit, where such as in Southeast Asia, Southeast Asian nations that had refugee camps, temporary camps, temporary settlements, or stopping places for people as they try to move on. We now have the Mediterranean, which we've talked a lot about today, as a particular issue. I'll say no more than the just uh, uh, repeat the search and rescue need. Also for the Norwegian ship that we are sending, that the primary responsibility is to save people from drowning. The primary responsibility is not to police. And then we have, uh, for Europe's sake now, the receiving end. We're a continent, we're talking about, we call it burden sharing, let's call it responsibility sharing. The fact that we have started uh, on some plans to look at this in a more comprehensive way. Italy looks the other way as people disembark, and it's very understandable. It's not often in European politics that we say look to Italy, but uh, when it comes to the Mediterranean, 
they really turned around 180 degrees after the October 19, 2013 Lampedusa tragedy. They mobilized the Mare Nostrum, uh, they mobilized the local municipalities all along the coast, but particularly in the south and Sicily. Uh, and they mobilized a political, uh, the public, uh, official resources in a complete turnaround of approach. They saved, as we've learned, so many people. And then they said to the rest of Europe, hey, this is becoming a bit too much. We need some assistance. And what did they get? Silence from everybody, except one who said, if we save people, it will become a pull factor, as we heard from the British Prime Minister. But things are changing now. Again, back to our model. Uh, where we actually approached all these four geographical tracks in Southeast Asia. Then we have four um, thematic tracks, if we can call it that. I'll start with the Hope track. This is Miriam, Lebanon, lost everything, as so many Syrian refugees have. This is Norwegian assistance to the Syrian crisis per person over the last two years. People in need are increasing dramatically year by year. Assistance available is decreasing from Norway, from the rest of the countries in Europe. We shall not be able to stop all the Syrians that are now crossing the Mediterranean. That's not our purpose. But we're not doing much to give them other options either. So our assistance to the country of transit is very, very limited as compared to the need. Our present government here says that we are now raising a billion for the Syria and the surroundings. That's an increase in total of 6.8% since last year. It is not up to speed, as I said. We have the refugee protection track. At the core of the comprehensive plan of action, the need to preserve the asylum institute, as we talked about, the asylum space, the, the whole very basic human right of being having the possibility to leave your country to seek protection somewhere else. It has to be maintained, and it is, again, not all that big. It was at the core of the Comprehensive Plan of Action. But it was made possible by a parallel migration track, very much governed by IOM. One million people were given the alternative of leaving um, under what was called the Orderly Departure Program where you were taken from Vietnam, most of them to uh, America, to the US, but there was a comprehensive track for migration alongside the refugee protection track. And you were taken in safety. You didn't need to go on a boat out in the uh, South Asian, Southeast Asian seas to be part of that program. Then there was another track, which you touched on most of this already, admittedly, but the safe return track. Those that are not in need of protection and those that will not be covered by a migration track has a good, well-organized alternative to having to go back home, and as you mentioned so correctly, with a bit of resources so you haven't completely lost out. And as we, for instance, did when we worked in Vietnam, with the individual that went back, followed also some development aid, some humanitarian support for the community. So taking back somebody who were not given protection, who were not given a migration permit, you actually got some money to the community. So you were a bit of a winner in the community when you went home. Very essential element of a reasonable approach to sending people home. Then, I think very much what we talked about now, the four, uh, the four elements again. The main, in, most important element, which we're still just on the margins of, I think, in Europe at the moment, is political acknowledgement. 
we don't need to be scared. We can acknowledge it's a big issue because it's not bigger than we can overcome. And with, if we throw in a second element of political will and ambition and leadership, this can very well be organized. Again, we're 500 million people. We're the richest continent on Earth. We have a fairly small flow as compared to others. With leadership, we can handle all these tracks, all these themes, uh, if we really want to. And let's, uh, just as we've seen maybe in this country that coming back to the center stage is more about a public and a political recognition of the problem and hopefully some more initiatives to address it. The uh, third element which we also had in the CPA was coordination. That the different actors came together and they were not so afraid of mandate creep. We didn't have the old debate about IOM's cup of tea and UNHCR's cup of tea and my country and your country. It was quite pragmatic in that we're good at this, you're good at that, we can handle this, you can handle that, but the idea that you made a comprehensive package and those that had capacity fill the, uh, the loopholes or the missing parts. Uh, this is again where, where Europe has to gain ambition, but it's not all that hard. We've heard how complex it is, but I mean the world has become complex. We, we can't give up for that reason. We just have to be a bit more comprehensive about how we approach it. The last aspect of the four is the money trap. It's really not very, very impressive what the EU has put on the table uh, to handle uh, the issue. 30 million for migration, 20 million euros for resettlement, it's tiny. We need a lot more money and that is also something that we have, particularly if we take into consideration what you say the need that we have for more migrants, for a larger workforce, a lot of this is simply good investment. Not to speak about the future of the people whom we want to give a better uh, better perception of what their opportunities are. We've talked about radicalization, about the fear. If we don't approach this in a comprehensive way, we're going to have a lot more disillusioned young people at our shores. Uh, so it's quite a good investment, actually. If I was in charge of defense budget, I would you know, take half and put it into this. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is we've done it before. It was a success. The comprehensive plan of action actually uh, resulted in the last refugee uh, getting protection, the last migrant going to somewhere else or back home. And uh, it is possible to read about it. Google CPA and you'll find some very interesting lessons learned to pass on to your political friends. Thank you.